Jesus came and for three and a half years, check this out, you guys, check this out, this rock that came and destroyed those feet. He's the cornerstone that the builders rejected, Psalm 118, 22, Matthew 21, 42, Acts 4, 11. He's the stumbling stone in Zion, Isaiah 28, 16, Romans 9, 33, 1 Peter 2, 6. He's the rock that followed his people in the wilderness, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And beyond that, when Simon Peter answered Jesus' question with who do people, or who do you say that I am? And he said that you are the Messiah, you are the son of the living God that Jesus said to him, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, on this truth of who I am, I will build my church. He is the rock that has crushed every other kingdom that has gone before him, and he is the rock that is established a kingdom that will not be given away, that will not be usurped, that will not be taken by human effort or power or human greed or whatever it is, because it belongs to Jesus who is seated on the throne, and it is growing and expanding to fill the earth and we are a part of it why because Jesus is the rock because Jesus is that kingdom the kingdom starts with a king in a manger and then John the Baptist shows up 30 years after Jesus birth and he begins by declaring what the kingdom is at hand repent and turn from your selfishness and your ways and turn because the king is coming and then Jesus came and he preached this, repent and demonstrations of the kingdom are at hand. This is what it looks like in my kingdom is what he came to demonstrate. The sick are healed, the blind see, the condemned are freed, the oppressed are forgo- and the forgotten are valued. The good news is for the poor. The orphans are adopted. Family is extended. The table is open and the father is forgiving. He said, this is what my kingdom looks like. And he spent three and a half years demonstrating for us an entirely different kingdom. There wasn't power over, it was power under. It wasn't to overthrow, but it was to serve. And when he could have called down wrath and when he could have destroyed and when he absolutely could have overthrown the Roman government, he chose instead to wash the feet of his disciples. And they hated it just like we hate it today. Because we want a savior that is a hero and a champion and who will come in and will destroy those that are giving us so much pain and trouble and struggle and strife. And we want Jesus to come and go, I hate my enemies destroy them and he wants to come and stand behind beside us and say love your enemies bless those who persecute you what kind of stupid kingdom is this what? the disciples are like when do we get our 12 thrones jesus what kind of dumb kingdom are you wanting me to be a part of where i get struck and you're telling me to turn the other cheek when i have all of the authority and power of heaven behind me It's one thing to be hit when you are powerless. It's an entirely different thing to be hit when you have the power of heaven behind you and to choose to turn the other cheek. This is the kingdom that Jesus lived out on this earth and it is the kingdom that he invites us to be a part of and i'm sorry to tell you this kingdom does not look like what america represents this kingdom does not look like what your democrat party looks like this kingdom does not look like what your republican party looks like this kingdom does not look like our business people and mm, business people are amazing our <laughs> how to say this correctly. It just doesn't look like the systems that are in place that feed those at the top with greed while continuing to suppress and oppress those that are at the bottom of the system that Jesus would come to say, this is not the way that it is. This is how it is. And he would take those that are beaten and forgotten and left on the side of the road because they are the worst of the worst and the nobodies of the nobodies. And he would say, you know what the kingdom looks like? It doesn't look like the religious person crossing the road to not soil themselves with that person. It doesn't look like the wealthy. It doesn't look like it looks like the person who should be an enemy to that person crossing the road and caring for them out of their own pocket and not just doing it for a moment, but coming back again and again to make sure that that person is cared for. What is this silly kingdom? It makes no sense to us. It is absolutely an upside down kingdom. And the more that we live for the kingdoms of this world, the more at odds we will be at the kingdom of of Jesus. And I don't want that to be the reality of our hearts and of our lives and of this people and the story of this house. 